Well, we've got the wind space hyper wheels behind me on a Pragma glycogen and a bad cookie variety. We've got lightweight wheels here. Some sprinkles coming up. We've got zip. This is all I've got left of the zip wheel. Zip Firecrest. We've got Envy here, which I hardly ride because in the we've got 80k an hour winds today. 80k an hour gust winds. An aero wheel and winds. Good luck with that. Um, yeah, riding. I did a 200k loop in winter on the Envies and the DT Swiss hubs roll fantastic. They're the ceramic ones, the 180. So fantastic hub, really nice. I like them. But the deep section wheels, man, gusty down like on the downhill. I had to change course. I'm like, this is just too. It's getting too. This is not enjoyable. All right, I've got 23 years racing experience, never had a driver's license, on the bike pretty much every day. If I wanna go get food, I'm on my bike. Um, traveled the world by bicycle, ridden in the craziest weather. And so I would never ever buy or accept aero wheels ever again. All right? Now, if, if someone said, hey, we want you to have these wheels, I'm like, okay, well, I'll sell them afterwards. I don't wanna ride them. I don't wanna ride 50 mil plus wheels. Not keen. So when I got the opportunity to ride the Hypers, I got 38 mil. Because just on a day, it'd be totally fine. It's gusting 80k an hour. So a bike like this, a lightweight climbing bike, is perfect for that. An aero bike, aero frame with big fat tubes is like a sail. When those 80k an hour westerlies hit and you're going north-south, and you've got a 50 mil or 80 mil, what are these? 70 mil maybe, 60 mils. You know, it's... it's it's not fun. And I've got experience, man. I can handle the bike like, I used to be a bike messenger. I've got mad skills on the bike. In the bunch, downhill, whatever. I don't like taking risks anymore though. You know what I mean? That's just made me getting old. But I, I don't like hospital food. And I like sex too much. So the thought of being in hospital, I don't want to do that. Uh, Zip 202. This rim's been pretty good. They ride pretty good. But this is what happened to the hub. It just exploded. Now this happened with Natasha riding it. Sent it back to Zip for warranty, and they said, nah. And I bought it brand new. Or it wasn't like I bought it second hand on eBay, and I was trying to, brand new, came on a bike stock, and this is the hub. And it's, you know, look at look how good condition, the, you know what I mean? It's hardly done any miles. And it exploded under Natasha's weight. You know, I'd maybe done a few hundred Ks in this wheel, Natasha done the most of it. And look at that, the free hub's still fantastic. It's alloy, so you can tell if this was a really, really worn wheel, it would have big chunks in there because it's alloy free hub, but they're soft. So that's zip quality. Would I ever buy a zip product again? No. Are the new ones better? Maybe, but they see when these were great, this is the best hob we've ever done. <laughs> Look at it, man. Look at that crap. <laughs> and the warranty afterwards, they're like, no. Nah. And I, here's the thing though, the shop I bought the bike from, Actually, one of the shops, one of the dealers who, you know, they said you should probably send those wheels back to get the hubs replaced out. And I'm like, but they're brand new. And I'm like, nah, they'll be fine. You know, they'll be fine. I should have I should have got them replaced straight away. But for me, the thought of throwing a brand new hub in the rubbish, couldn't get recycled, it was just chucked in straight to landfill. I'm just like, nah, it's surely these hubs, these are zip hubs, man. Surely they're fine. Eventually, they did fail. And I uh, sent them back and they're like, nah, it's too, too old, mate. Even though they're in mint condition, you know? <laughs> so why would you pay $3,000 or whatever, $2,000 for a set of wheels when the customer service is... Why wouldn't you just go pay a hypers, man? This is... Now, I'm not saying this just because they gave me free stuff or give me free stuff or whatever. I'm legit saying, you know, if I was a customer, which I am, I still buy a lot of most of my stuff, if I was out there and I had to buy new wheels, not that carbon wheels are for everyone, you know, some people shouldn't ride carbon wheels. Maybe you're really heavy, maybe you're racing cobblestones, maybe you're on a budget, you can't afford them, you don't really need them. But if you're in the market and you want the best carbon wheels that money can buy, and we got lightweights right here, which are the most expensive wheels, you can't get a more expensive wheel than this. You know, maybe there's someone in Switzerland who's making something for some barrister or whatever, but you know, in general, the lightweight is the creme de la creme of overpriced carbon product. You know? 
Anyhow, these are great. I bought these a few years ago. I got a great deal on them. Distributor gave me a great deal. Appreciative, grateful. They've been a great wheel. They're very comfortable. Out of the box, when you spin them, you notice with lightweights, they're wobble. They're buckled. Not like that, but they're buckled. They're not... You, you, lightweights aren't dead straight. It's probably hard to see in the camera, but there's a shim. It's like, you know, just... So if you're OCD, you want straight wheels, don't buy lightweights because they're not straight. Does it matter? Not really. Just saying. Um, comfortable wheel, nice. Break a spoke. It's landfill pretty much. Or maybe you got to send it back to Germany to fix the spoke. So, you know, they're, they're lightweights. But it's 2020 now. This, uh, these are, uh, how many grams was it? Was it 40 grams heavier than my lightweight Gen 4 clinches? All right. They're clinches as well. But these ride incredible a wider rim gives you more stability than the downhills for the corner you just feel safer right you, you don't feel like totally on edge you know which is you get used to it in the lightweights but that you know these just give you way more uh, confidence it just, it just feels safer they feel they feel more sturdy like if you hit a rock on the lightweights you feel like it's going to explode under your body weight but with these you, you know they feel a lot stronger um I would not want to race. I've raced on cobbles in Belgium, and I would not want to use lightweights. No way. But these wheels, I would feel safe, and I feel like you know you could use them one more time afterwards. Versus a lot of carbon wheels that just get just get trashed, thrown in the bin afterwards, especially the bikes, because cobbles is just so hard on it. Um, spokes you can get replaceable spokes. Hub durability, early days, but the free hub body, it's like engages like so so well. Better than DT Swiss. There's no slop. It's like DT Swiss. There's no slop in the cassette body. Unlike your old Mavics, where there's like current Mavics, where there's a slop in the free hub body. Um, it's just, you know, the shifting's not, not as good on the Mavics, etc. So, yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, like, this is the future. Like, why would you pay more than, you know, 1000 or $1,100 for carbon wheels? Like, you can if you want. Like, why would you pay more than $1,000 for the best of the best carbon frame. If you're paying more than $1,000 for a high-end carbon frame or wheels, USD, in my opinion, in my experience, as a total bike geek, and who's ridden all the brands, and who's had, had the, the, the fortune to be able to ride so many bikes, and my friends go, hey, I've got a new Cervelo, I've got a new uh, Cannondale, I've got a new S-Works, I've got this, I've got that, can you ride to what you think? You know, I'm very grateful that people like want to hear my opinion, and I like it as well. I love bikes, man. I love bikes, and uh, I love getting people into cycling. Um, why would I buy anything else these days? Why would I buy anything else? You know, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. Um, I've even got right now. I've got uh, two S Works SL Sevens coming. Which are insurance replacement. They're gonna give me S Works SL sevens, and I'm like, Ugh. this breaks, man. And so I'm dealing with the insurance company. Like, can you give me a credit, store credit? Yeah, maybe I can get my. Uh, I, just, I don't want them, man. I don't want them. You know, I just don't want to deal with proprietary. You know, like um, fork. You know, the, the flappy stem and just the cable. So I don't want to deal with it. There's a cat here. You know, I don't want to deal with that. You know, Scragglepuss. A little Roxy. Um, see what I mean? So that, that's, that's how crazy it is. I've got two SL7 Tarmac s Workses coming. I have to wait till March. Um, because they're out of stock. Because of China. All the factories in China were just, you know, full full clap. And I I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, oh, man. You know, I'm grateful that my bike's insured that got stolen. But... SL7 looks like I mean if they had a rim brake version yeah well, you know that'd be a different story but disc brakes on a road bike I'm like it's got to be heavier than this man this is as it is with the mountain bike pedals on it and a power meter and a bottle cage it's 6.53 kilos with heavy tubes the S works is going to be like 7.2 or 7.3 kilos first world problems you know I mean, like, why would I want to go on a slower bike, road bike, right? Disc brakes for gravel, mountain bike, yeah, heck yeah. For the road, why would I want to go to a heavier bike than that? Like, what? That's like having vapor flies and then having Air Max, you know? It's like, what? 
<laughs> I don't ride for show. I ride for go. I want to. Oh, I like feeling fast, you know. Um, and but I do enjoy the people out there who ride and disc brake road bikes and stuff who are fitter than me, because when they beat me, the margin's a little bit less than if they're riding a six point five kilo bike. The margin would be a lot bigger. They'd flog me even more. So yeah, I, I appreciate that disc brakes have come on the norm. Heavy disc brakes with envy wheels. You know, I appreciate that. You know, people are running 1,800 gram wheel sets now. 1,800 gram, $5,000 Envy wheel sets. Because once you add the rotors to it, it's extra 250 grand or 220 grams. It's crazy. So yeah, these are 1,260 grams, around about. So was it 1,260? Um, disc version would probably be more like 1,400. Or hey, that should be more than that. It'd be more like 1,550. Because you've got to factor in that you've got to add the weight of the discs. These ones here... The brakes are already built in. Isn't that cool? The brake, the disc, the rotor surface is already built in. So this is technically a disc wheel, but it's just like a 700C disc. Instead of like a 140mm caliper, you got, you know, a 622 or 700, whichever ERD you're using. But anyway, that's the wind space hyper wheels, hyped up, feeling good. Um, you know, look at this, man. Look at this. Oh man, like, you know, here's a, here's a thing, pretty much everything these days is made in China, you know, and a lot of it's shipped to Taiwan for assembly and to avoid punitive and dumping tariffs. China's making most of the stuff out there, so why not just cut out, you know, the fat bankers who own the company, wherever they are, and go factory direct, deal with wind space, or deal with myself. Or deal with, you know, other brands, fast sports, YOLO, you know. Why make super rich people even more super rich? I mean, do what, do it if you want. If you've got to have that brand name, go for it. But I've been there, done that. And, uh, you know, end of the day, I'm not trying to tell anyone not to buy an S-Works or a Pinarello or, or whatever. And people are going to, no, no, if my opinion mattered that much... <laughs> You know, it doesn't. I'm, my opinion matters to some people who really trust experienced opinion. But, uh, you know, I'm not trying to destroy any brands or whatever. Like, I understand, like, people want to, you know, Team Sky run the Pinarello and it's, there's an emotion. It's like, I'm a Pinarello and I've got status with my banker buddies. And that's cool, man. Whatever gets people in the cycling. Because the more rich people are in the cycling, the better it really is. Because those rich people are maybe barristers or politicians and they can make changes in community with bike lanes and laws and so I'm all for it you know? and it's never going to change I hope it doesn't change I hope the rich people stay in cycling even if it means more like aero disc brake integrated bar stem <laughs> combos for $20,000 but I hope these rich people stay in cycling I don't want them to go away that's why I push high carb because I don't want to be keto and just quit because these, these people who are very wealthy they do have a lot of clout when it comes to legislation, things like that. So they're, they're very, very valuable people. I'm just trying to keep it real here for the people who are watching the YouTube video who are 13 minutes in and they're watching some crazy dude called Duran Ride of a vegan hat I've had since 2008, Ramble On. Um, just give you the honest advice. If you want the best bike out there, you know, 6.5 kilo, sub 7 kilo bikes with clencher wheels. If you want to spend some money on some wheels, if you're itching to save every gram, but you still want a functioning high performance product, boom. Wind space hyper 38 mil clinches, rim brake. End of story. End of story. Someone's like, I've got Dura Ace wheels, C24s. They're about 1480 grams. Should I get these? You're going to save 220 grams rotating mass. Mm, you know, it depends on where your fitness level's at. If you've, if you've just bought the Dura Ace wheels, you don't need these. But if your Dura Ace wheels are really. In the, the brake is getting concave, and you know, the bearings are shot, the cone races are pitted like dates. You know, then maybe you know, put those on your, as your training wheel and then have these for your, your good days, your time trials, etc. Otherwise, um, you know, you can get other gains elsewhere. Anyway, that's the rant, that's the rave. The wind space hypers. I put them on, even put them on the, Natasha got to ride this bike. Put Natasha on this bike, and she's like, man, these are, these are snappy. She's just accelerating. I can always tell when a product is good because whatever girlfriend I have at the time is I just put it on their bike 
and I can just feel their energy come through it. They ride aggressively. They try and drop me, and they just they're going for it. You know, and I'm thinking, oh, all right. If the product's bad, I put it on their bike, and they instantly whine about it, oh, or they just, or they, they just, their vibes just off, right? Their vibe is off. So that's a great way to test as well. Um, you know, and I noticed that with disc brakes, I put a girlfriend on a disc brake bike, and she and she just stopped doing time trials and sprints. She's just like, oh. and I, was, I couldn't work out. I was like, oh, yeah, you got the new bike, but you're not as not as aggressive as on the bike as you used to be. Hmm. Yeah, and then you put someone from disc brakes into a rim brake bike, and all of a sudden, the first day they're riding it, they're just like out the saddle, just flexing it and going for it. So I'm a huge fan of rim brakes, road bikes. Huge fan of these wind space hyper wheels. Huge fan of super lightweight product that's durable affordable, safe, and it feels really good. I'm a fan of product that enhances your feel and your experience. Aesthetically, I mean, I don't think these wheels look very good. I think these wheels look much better. Deep section carbon, it looks sexy. The lightweights, man. I mean, that's a hot looking wheel. You know, it's just a classic timeless edition. But I don't care about fashion anymore. I'm 43. I want every second matters, man. I want the best performing product, all right? I think these oval rings look a bit like, you know, mismatched, but they feel really good and they make me go a little bit faster for the same given effort, all right? So I like that. Um, yeah, I'm not really about, you know, <laughs> that like cable housing. Shift's really good. Cool. Um, for me, it's function over fashion. Function over fashion. This shirt, got it from the op shop. Gives me great sun protection when I'm going to the shops, get some get some food. Boom. A lot of people would rather just have sunburn. Um, so yeah, definitely function over fashion. I'm not 20 anymore where I just follow the fashion, just get approval from people who don't even prove themselves. I'm 43. I've used so much product over the last 20 something years. Very grateful. All this is first world problems I'm talking about here today. And uh, it's, that's, that's the reality right there. But, um, yeah, I feel really good. Just, yeah. It, I, I wish people told me this. I wish YouTube was around 20 years ago. Do you know how much money I've spent over the years on, you know what I mean? Brand name product. There was just a massive, massive letdown. Brand name product that didn't match the advertising PR hype. It was just a load of, eh. Now when I read advertisements, I'm just like, get your hand off it, man. All right? Get your hand off it. It's indecency. It's verbal indecency. But hey, people got to make a dollar. And a lot of people don't ride bikes that much. They buy a bike and they shelve it. And it becomes art. Which is, you know, I guess it keeps shops in business, etc. It all serves a purpose. But again, you watch my content because you want to get your best performances. Especially your 18 minutes in. You're performance focused. You're not fashion focused. If you're fashion focused, you wouldn't even watch my content. You'd be watching, you know... What would you, you be watching? I know, it's people who just do those perfectly edited videos and they just follow the fashions. Hey, so there's a purpose. More bums and bikes, that's the secret.